This is KGW News at Noon. Our top story at noon, all evacuation levels have been lifted for the Nikia Creek fire. Good afternoon, I'm Brenda Braxton. Fire officials made that announcement just about 30 minutes ago. Crews have been making some headway on the fire, burning northeast of Camas. The fire remains 23% contained and covers just over 1,900 acres. Fire officials tell us the weather has certainly helped. The flames have slowed, but they do expect smoke plumes to be visible for quite some time. And the biggest issue with the Nakia Creek fire right now is the air quality. That's a live picture from our Wells Fargo Skycam. This morning, the Rose City had the second worst air quality in the entire world, meaning it's unhealthy for everybody, not just sensitive groups. We want to bring in meteorologist Rod Hill today. So Rod, your forecast shows relief is on the way. Yes, a little bit, a little bit later today, a lot tomorrow. And by the way, that Wells Fargo live shot Brenda just showed you over downtown, that is in fact all smoke. There's no fog in any of that. That's just pure smoke that's settled over our area. So obviously the air quality alerts continue from Seattle all the way down to Eugene. You can see the shades on the map. And here are the latest reports from DQ. Believe it or not, despite that shot that we just showed you over downtown Portland, the air quality index numbers are actually a little bit better right now in many spots than they were earlier this morning. But still with that said, it's mostly red dots. That's unhealthy for the Rose City and some areas that are still very unhealthy. The yellow dots are moderate. Now the good news is, West winds are picking up not so much down at the surface, but aloft, and that's helping to disperse the uh, smoke somewhat. So this shows you at seven o'clock tonight. Notice no color shadings in Newport, Longview or Portland. So that's the haze dramatically thinning out, thinning out somewhat down in Salem as well. And you can see, th here's the fire burning in near the Skamania Clark County line. See the smoke plume? Boom, going dead off to the east. That's the west winds blowing that. Cold front, rain comes in tomorrow. Look at how many areas are no longer shaded in color. So that's really some terrific uh, dispersion of the wildfire smoke over the next 24 to 38 hours. Here's the front that will bring tomorrow's rain. We'll talk more about that coming up. In the meantime, our temperature is 62. We'll get up to 70 today. Hazy sunshine, but at least relief is coming. Back to you. That is welcome news. Thank you, Rod. I-5 South near Eugene is open again after this deadly chain reaction crash. It happened yesterday morning and involved 45 cars and up to 20 semis. One person was killed. That was the morning. By the afternoon, OSP responded to another crash on I-5 South near Albany. Officers say the driver of a semi rear-ended another big rig. That second truck burst into flames, killing the driver. Investigators say heavy fog and poor visibility contributed to both of those crashes and several others yesterday. Now to a traffic alert for anybody heading to the Portland airport this weekend. The Max Red Line won't run Saturday or Sunday. You can ride the blue and green lines to the Gateway Transit Center and then shuttle buses will take you out to PDX. If you're coming in from Beaverton, the blue line will run more frequently to replace that red line service. As you can hear, lots of changes, so make sure you just plan ahead. The midterm election is less than three weeks away. And last night, the candidates for Oregon governor got one last chance to debate each other and make their best case to Oregon voters. Catherine Cook reports on the highlights. Outside our news studios, everyone knew what night it was, the debate for Oregon's governor. When the candidates arrived, KGW and our partners at the Oregonian were ready. The first question of the night, would they support Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler's plan to ban unsanctioned camping and instead ask the county to set up three massive sanctioned camps? And how would they help people get off the streets? Tina Kotek. I think it is important to make it easier for outreach teams and folks who are providing services to connect with people who are camping outside. And I think this will facilitate. But it has to be done right, it has to be done effectively. And honestly, as governor, I'm gonna make sure it does happen holding the mayor and the city accountable to getting people off the streets, 
connecting people with services. Christine Drazen. You have to know who they are. And right now, when we look at home engagement with our homeless populations in Oregon, we know that the response is almost entirely housing first. That the challenges and the problems of the people living on our street, that they're not approaching it like it's a case management challenge. That we're moving people beyond being houseless and unsheltered into supportive housing, into services, and then on to stability and the dignity of work. Betsy Johnson. I think that has been the hallmark of dealing with the homeless problem, that we can't seem to agree on the methodology. Everybody thinks their way is, is the correct way, uh, housing first or deal with the underlying problems. Uh, I, I think that it is imperative that we have metrics to measure our success so that we're not just taking people and moving them from one smaller encampment. KGW asked candidates if they thought we needed more police officers and if so, how to fill vacancies. Tina Kotek answered first. When people call 911, they need to feel safe and have the right response at the right time. And we do need more officers. And one of the things the state can do is increase the number of classes and trainings that are available so local law enforcement can get new hires through that training in a more efficient manner. The other candidates answered the question in part by first addressing Kotek. Tina Kotek is the original defund the police candidate. She did not support police even when rioters were attacking a police station. It's stunning to me that she would talk now like she supports law enforcement. I will support law enforcement. Ms. Johnson. I will join Ms. Drazen in saying I'm surprised by Tina's answer because we've got to start by respecting our police. That doesn't mean walking with the rioters or excoriating uh, the police when the riots were happening. Asked if they supported spending Oregon taxpayer money to help people from outside the state access abortions, Drazen said no. Abortion is legal in Oregon and as governor it will remain so and people from other states would be able to come into, abort into Oregon to receive abortion services. But I do not believe that that's the proper use of taxpayer dollars. Johnson said no. Contributions are up uh, for Planned Parenthood uh, offices throughout the country, and um, I would not use taxpayer money to pay for out-of-state uh, uh, abortions, but rely on Planned Parenthood's past practice of helping financially. Kotek said yes. This is a moment for leadership and making sure that people have the care they need. And that might mean using Oregon taxpayer money to help those individuals have the care they need. And I support that because that is the world we live in right now. During the debate, there were some fireworks. Are, are you a spoiler right now? Have you ever considered dropping out and throwing your support to one of the other candidates? I absolutely have not considered dropping out. And the spoiler in this race is Tina. Tina has spoiled a state I love. She spoiled the party that I used to belong to with these outrageously progressive policies. I love this state just as much as she does. We don't need to take a hard right turn to put our state back on track. This to me is the issue. I am in this race because Oregon is on the wrong track because single party control, because one version of a Democrat compared to another version of a Democrat is not balanced. The candidates clashed on how they answered a lot of questions, but not this one. Should Merritt Paulson sell the Portland Thorns and Timbers, Ms. Drazen? Yes. Ms. Johnson? Yes. Ms. Kotek? Yes. If you missed the debate last night, no worries. We have posted it on KGW.com as well as our YouTube channel. You can also stream it on KGW Plus, on Roku, and on the Fire TV app. Well, Oregon voters start receiving their ballots soon. They were sent out yesterday. If you're registered and you don't get your ballot by next Thursday, the 27th, contact your county elections office. Ballots must be dropped off by 8 o'clock election night or postmarked by election day, November 8th.